welcome, uh, blessing, and uh, go to the gym, blessing. Thank you very much for for coming. Thank you uh, to us, to visit us, and uh, having time for us. Uh, I would like to just. Uh, says you know the blessing uh, competing since last few years i think you started in 2011 isn't it yeah 2011 2011 <laughs> remember you very very well time uh, the improvements since then is it's insane how fast you actually progressing and just that year uh, blessing become uh, probably the youngest uh, irish pro uh, bodybuilder winning his uh, first uh, international uh, show well after the Arnold Classic in 2014 when he won the also junior, won. <laughs> the junior uh, Arnold Classic categories right now after two years uh, just came back to Diamond Cup in Czech Republic uh, where he won a heavyweight class and an open Bro. class and that was actually giving him a pro card week after he do that again in Porto Portugal. Portugal, so he got the, his second pro card. <laughs> Call the second pro card. <laughs> yeah. So uh, basically, uh, maybe just tell us a few, few words, blessing, how did you start it, you know, from the very beginning, maybe maybe just a bit your background, you mm -hmm. know, when did you start lifting weights and how everything mm -hmm. started, and then we can, you know, go to, to the Q&A. Actually, it's questions. funny, you know, people call it blessing in disguise. Funny because uh, at the start I always I always wanted to, to be a doctor. <laughs> it's funny, but that's <laughs> and I, I did actually in my living side. I studied so hard, I got the point. But then back then it was very hard for me because I haven't I haven't got the Irish passport, you know. So I couldn't get the grant and I was living in Mayo with my brother, so it was hard for him to kind of push me through college and his kids as well. So I have to push the college to the side and then I started doing personal training. And I was in shape, and I always traded throughout my uh, fourth year to the sixth year. I was always in good shape, shredded when was it, when skin. Was it? What was that year? That time, 2008, 2007. When did you start it? Like, uh, like proper training. I started 2011 when I tried to step already, on stage. Yeah, getting ready for the first yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's where my friends say, "Ah, go on, blessing, do a show. You know, compete." Just I was like, "Nah, I don't want to do. It. I don't want to get into that. I just want to, you know, do this for myself and just." be in good shape and that's all. And then I did the fourth show and people were like, okay, I didn't, I was, I think I placed fourth and people were come to do it, you got some great shit, man, good potential. I was like, hmm, really, you think so? <laughs> I thought I was looking quite skinny up there. I was like, ah, you look good, okay, give it a go again. Then 2012, Spring Classic, I got the first place in the juniors with uh, Burger King diet. <laughs> Remember that time? It was 2012 where I, when I came to the Galway? Yeah, we never never forget that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been together <laughs> and we've been uh, both getting ready for the show and, and Blessing been drinking something. I said, what are you drinking, man? <laughs> And he said, serious mouse. <laughs> you know, that, was my, that was my first ever protein <laughs> top. It was serious mouse. I said, man, is it full of sugar? Yeah, but it tastes good. <laughs> I'm going to get big, bro. <laughs> yeah, so 2012, I done my four, uh, spring classic. I got the juniors, 2012, uh, I mean, 2013 nationals. 2012 nationals. I got the juniors as well. Then 2013, we did their, I done my uh, fourth mains. Yeah. And then, that's when I went to the European Championship, top six. No, no, uh, seventh place. And then I came back. I tried for the Arnold Classic 2013. I was, um, again, I placed seventh. I was very, uh, very uh, disappointed because I thought I did really, it was, a, it was a very close call. I thought I made the top six, but you know, for some reason, I was pushed out and I talked to the judges. They said you need for to. Many judges yeah. that time and many guys who, who knows about bodybuilding a lot, you should definitely be in top six. Yeah, so I talked to the judges. I said, dude, you got to work on your hamstring, your legs, you know, your legs not there, you know, you just need to. And I promised myself I'm going to come back next year and, you know, kick ass. And I went there in 2014 and I got my uh, fourth international win. And so from there, it kicks on and I just started working and here we are today. Made a lot of progress and I was able to achieve my pro card in, in two years after. Uh, so, uh, blessing that, that Arnold the win. So the last, the last competition was Arnold Classic, isn't it? Uh, before that break. Before that break, no, actually, I don't know. Europeans, it? Europeans, yeah, Europeans. 2015, other Europeans. Okay. Again, it was, for, it was my first time doing the men's international, that just to see heavy, what I needed. Yeah. So I done the super heavy, but I was, uh, I don't even think I placed in top 15 because yeah. <laughs> my condition was off and everything was off. For me, it was a try, just to see what I needed to do to be able to hang with the men's. 
and you know? since then till till today you know till the first show uh, in the diamond cup where you won your your pro card is was any any specific goal you have like would you like to improve anything particular or just over the problem was uh, always my legs you know my legs were always just never there you know but then i focused on them i worked re extremely hard i was training them twice a week you know like <laughs> crazy training something like we did today just mm. insane i split my quads from my hamstrings so i'll be training say an hour 40 minutes just on quads no hamstrings i never train hamstring in quads i you know i separate them so i can focus more i can get in as much as needed there to get them to grow so over two years you know i was able to grow them you know to a decent size catching up to my upper body and that was what got me there win in, uh, in uh, Czech Republic and Portugal because, you know, proportion was there, balance was there, and condition was there as well. So it was just... <laughs> yeah, so, so you said to, to improve your legs, you, you've been training your legs twice a, twice a week, you've been separate quads and, mm -hmm. and hamstrings, but is there anything particular, I don't know, way of uh, exercising or, or particular exercise would you really believe that help you to build that and pack that size on your legs? Uh, I wouldn't say one particular exercise is the, like the main mm -hmm. main leg builder you know i believe you know to build legs you need to work around 360 you have to hit them from every single angle volume after volume set after set set you know like for, say for quads i'll do like five to six different type of exercises sets i can't even tell you how much set i'll do just not sometimes properly, just, yeah, just just keep going you know if i if, if i'm getting the pump i keep going for leg station I would do maybe eight sets of crazy reps, you know, like to fill you each set. So that's the way I train my same principle I use for my overall body parts. Shoulders, crazy volume, arms like we did today. It's just, you know, I spend same, same amount of time on each muscle group. Even when it comes to rear delts, I will spend say 40 minutes, three to four exercises, crazy sets, you know, set after set, high, uh, high reps. You know, same for single body part. I don't really, you know, I don't like neglect any body part. Same amount of time on each body part. And that's where I believe, you know, you can build a balanced physique. To build a balanced physique, you need to focus on each most, uh, body part. You can't really, you can't say your car, say shoulders, your training shoulders, you come in, bang, bang, you know, do all your uh, push and, and then the last two minutes, you do a couple of sets on the rear delts. You know, that doesn't work like that. You know, you're gonna end up having a really bad rear delt. Start off with the rear delts, do four set, four different type of exercises, you know, set after set, high reps, you know, get the palm in there, get the, break down the muscle fibers, you know, and they will grow, everything will grow, you know? That's right. And since 2015 till 2017, you, you've packed a lot of muscle. That was probably, what, around seven, eight kilo? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, around that, yeah, around yeah, that. seven, eight kilos of, of muscle, of uh, muscle, so. You trained that insane. How did you found, you know, or there's in a particular way how you've been, you know, take care about your recovery? Of course, probably diet was, was number one, right? Yeah, eating well. I mean, I don't believe in overtraining and Overtraining is under eating, and bad sleep, you know? If you train really, really hard, you need to eat. You need to get them calories in, you need to get plenty of sleep, you know? If you're not sleeping, you know, if you've had a really bad sleep, you wake up the next day, very hard to train, you know? You feel real tired, you're not there, and you might think that's overtraining. It's not overtraining, you know? Your, your eating is bad, and your sleeping isn't good, you know? Once you train really hard, eat well, and plenty of sleep. You know, I believe recovery is, will be definitely. You know. I think this is this, this is uh, the biggest factor you improved since you moved from uh, from Mayo to to Dublin, uh, not from from uh, but but where Casabar, Casabar, Casabar to yeah Mayo yeah to yeah. Dublin because I remember when I, when I spoke to you years ago, you know, you've been working very very hard because you've been working uh, you know night shift yeah night shift right <laughs> you know I never forget that conversation you said like yeah after. After the, the work, I'm going to the gym, you know, then I'm coming back to the gym, going for sleep, you know, waking up, going again to the again, gym, again twice and then going to work, you know. I said, man, how, how yeah, are you was, doing was, that, you know? It was quite intense. And that was probably it, you know, that you didn't sleep that time mm -mm. enough, mm -mm. you know. And you will be still growing, of course, because you have that potential. But right now, you've been really Yeah, everything, yeah, everything is, yeah, everything's, um, a lot smarter now, you know. I'm doing things with, you know, get my rest in. I'm, I'm resting maybe after every, Three days, say Monday, Tuesday, 
Wednesday, Thursday, I'm resting. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm rest, resting. You know, so I'm getting thrown in that rest days in there. You know, you always feel different after a rest day, like you feel. I never get it till the last year, you know. I always just believe in training, 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 but the rest is so fucking important, you know. So, you feel so much better after, after you know, I believe some people will say like, oh, I can train six days, seven days in a row, I'm good, I'm still training, you know. But try a rest day, and then after that rest day, go into the gym, see how much, measure your improvements. It's, yeah different you know and you can perform better your strengths on different level and pff, you yeah. smash your workout so right now uh, you just finish your your spring season right and you're getting ready for another show and uh, you reached and you achieved your, your pro card but you decide to, to do a couple more show yeah. as amateur what was the reason you know and what show would you like to do like, like I'm getting yeah. mad messages now even on Instagram it's crazy on Instagram even Victor Martinez he commented on my photo and he goes dude why are you still competing give all the guys a chance to achieve their goal and make the dream a reality too when I first saw the message I was like I was shocked because <laughs> this is Victor Martinez I was like wow this is watching he's commenting I'm like you know, I didn't even know what I said. I said something like, uh, wow, uh, uh, emoji thanks. <laughs> you know, then I mailed him personally, like I told him reason why. You know, like, and I'm getting a lot of that, you know, dude, come on, why are you wasting your time? Could you give other, it's, you can't, it's like, and people are saying I'm fucking stupid for doing that and I'm, it's not fair. And then I'm trying to say like, okay, would you call Phil Heat uh, a dickhead for winning Mr. Olympia? Uh, five times in a row, just, uh, stopping other guys from making the dream a reality. You can't, this is bodybuilding. You know, if you're, if you're there, you're there. You know, nothing, <laughs> there's nothing no one can do. That's just bodybuilding. It's, it's you know, if you call them fair, it's unfair. So I plan to do a few more shows. Um, like I took two years off, you know, to, to, uh, to achieve my pro card, yeah. to do shows and um, I don't want to just, you know, that two years off just for one show, no, I don't, I don't want to do that, you know, just <laughs> two years is a, it's a quite a long time, you know, so I plan to take as much as I can from these years, and then at the end of the year, I am going to, you know, get ready for, right now I don't feel like I'm ready for, for, a, for a pro show yet, I feel like I need more experience on stage, and um, as I'm competing, I'm getting better and better, my stage present presentation is getting better, so, that's the main reason why. And at the end of the year, you know, there's an Elite Star Award to be given yeah. by the IBB, this is new. And I just found out a couple of weeks ago. So I was like, yeah, I want to get this. You know, so why <laughs> this is bodybuilding? Yeah. I'm trying to get as much as- Just maybe explain, you know, to the guys, you know, who wouldn't know much about the, the elite, to, elite League right now, in which is the, the new, mm. you know, tournament where you can uh, make a points and make it money. Yeah, it's, as it's, a, it's as amateur. Yeah, I think it's really good. It's like, I think they're giving out over 200, 200 grand at the end of the year to athlete, you know, which is great for an amateur. You know, it's like, say if you compete internationally, they're starting shows, not every show, say the European Championship, few Olympia amateurs, if you're like placing top six there, you're picking up points. And at the end of the year, they pick like the top threes and they spread this money out. It's, it's in men's physique. Uh, classic physique, uh, bikinis, yeah, and body bodybuilding. Yeah, you know, so just those areas. So you can potentially make forty, fifty million. You yeah. can make I yeah. Think, I think you can. You can even reach uh, more money as amateur right now as even winning the, the pro. Winning there, yeah, yeah, one of yeah. The pro show. You know, like each person, you, I don't know. You so get a that's <laughs> So I gotta do all these shows. I got four more shows left. Few yeah, more points. <laughs> Pick up few more points. So um, that's the reason why. You know, this is bodybuilding. Again, it's not just your diet. It's not just training, training, training. You gotta think about the business side as well. Absolutely. You know, it's business. Bodybuilding is huge. Yeah. You know, many people, uh, people have told me, I've heard it thousands of times. Dude, you're wasting your time. My friends. People that I'm friends with, they told me this. Your you body being, you can't really make a career out of it. I said, watch me. It's a huge business. And if you're smart, you can really make a lot of money. Because it's, it's so popular right now. Instagram, Facebook, it's so huge. Yeah. <laughs> it's so huge, you know? It's a huge business. You know? So if you play the card right, if you love fitness, if you love uh, competing, keep at it, stick to it. You can really make really big things out of it, you know? 
Absolutely. Recently, you, you just built up crazy, you know, and one of the, the followers on Instagram, and, and I'm sure every one of us, you know, uh, follow you, you know, on Instagram and, and Facebook. Uh, I, I think, you know, one of the, the funniest, you know, videos you've been releasing <laughs> there recently, you know, tell us, yeah, like, from where that idea is coming up. <laughs> Do you know what, you know, it was, uh, it was one time I was thinking, like, you know, like, it's, bodybuilding is so boring these days, you know, it's like, everyone, Everyone just talking about their meals and, right. you know, something funny will be nice, you know? Definitely. And then I woke up one day and I had this idea of, uh, how do I do a funny video today? And I got to the gym, was kind of stupid making it because people were looking at me like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> but uh, pre walk all over my face, acting like an idiot to the gym. And um, I posted up online, it went everywhere, you know? And people love it, people, because it's so different, you know, because people are used, they're used to seeing your meals and your training. It's boring, you know, it's yeah. not every time people want to be seeing that, and not everybody are into that, you know? So, it'd be a lot of people who just, just want to laugh, you know, and it's great, it's good for you, because you're, you're marketing yourself, your name is, you know, social media is blown up, it's, it's business point of view, it's amazing, it's great. You know, so these funny videos, people love them. And it's really good, yeah. It's good to, it's a good way to build up the social medias and... Um, I have to say, like, uh, you're one of that athlete, you know, because I know, I know you very, very well since the beginning, you know, and uh, since day one, you have, you had a very, very strong mind, you know. When, when, I, when you set your goal, mm. you do whatever, whatever is necessary to do to, to get there, you know and uh, we just keep moving forward all the time. Uh, is there any particular um, you know, advice you can give it to all the young guys who just come in into this, uh, well, sport, business, we can say, you know, uh, how they can motivate and keep that motivation, that drive to, to success? For me, um, the thing is, I, have, I started training since I was a very kid, a very little kid, because I was very skinny, and um, I just wanna, you know, I wanna get a lot, I wanna get stronger, I wanna be able to defend bullies, and as time goes on, it became part of me, you know, I just loved it. I just, I kinda wake up without working out. It's like, you can't take working out, you can't take the gym away from me. I'll be, I'll be lost. You know, I just love it so much. And that's one of the things that like, people ask me for what motivation was. It's like, it's part of me. You know, when you love something, you don't really need a motivation. I don't know. You mm -hmm. don't really need a motivation. And I always kind of, I always want to take the next level. You know, and I always set the goals, you know. If on the Arnold Classic, um, after my second international show, two international show, shows, I didn't make top six. The third one was the Arnold Classic 2014. And I was going into that show saying to myself, if I do not place in this show, I'm gonna give it up and I'm gonna look for something else. Because I love it so much, I wanna make something out of it. You know, and um, I, I love it, but then I'm not making progress. I'm not going anywhere with it. You know, that Arnold Classic win gave me so much, so much power, so much motivation, so much drive to keep going there and become something out of this sport, you know? For me, it's just the love of the sport, the love, you know, that I love it so much. And it's always good to set a goal, you know? You have to, you have, to have something you're working towards, you know? If you haven't got a goal, it's so easy to be distracted by friends or by family or uh, by anything, you know? But if you, have, if you have a goal, you set it there, and you're just nothing stopping you for, from making that goal a reality, you know? So little goals, you know, it's, it's, it's always, uh, very it's good, helpful. you know, helpful, yeah. yeah I think that, that the biggest uh, and, the, and the big factor of, like, just keep moving forward is like a small success. Mm, mm. As you said, mm. you know, in that 2014, mm. that was a time when you said, mm, mm. I'm gonna win, I'm gonna quit, mm, mm. you know? Even though I know, for you know, me. And that gave you that extra motivation. Extra drive, you, yeah. you start to believe in yourself, mm. right? Even the Arnold win is still, if people are asking what's your biggest achievement so far, it's not this, it's not this, um, this pro wins now. It's the, it's the Arnold. It's, for me, it was, it was special. It was so special, because I had a goal there to make it top six, and I went there, I nailed everybody, you know? Man, like, I, had, I remember uh, 12 weeks out, you know, that's when I contacted David Gill, I was like, David, you know, I really want to do well on these shows, please. You know, what can you do for me? And uh, that's where David gets in, and we make plans, he changed my diet around, and he said, all you need, you've all the size, all you need is, 
It's a condition. Yeah. Yeah, I said, I have no legs. David said, no, legs are there. If you come in condition, the lines are going to show, the cards are going to show, and you're going to do well. And, you know, <laughs> we did, and still, that show till today, it's the, I don't even know, it's, it's the biggest motivation for me. It's like, it's what's keeping me going. You know, because many times I've doubted myself. I'm like, maybe I'm not going to, you know, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of like uh, bad comments telling you you're no good, you know. People will say a few things, even though you love the sport so much, you, you, this none can stop you. Sometimes these little things can get here, and if you're not careful, they can stop you. You know, but you know, since I have the Arnold there, it's just kept me going. You know, if I can do it, if I can win the Arnold Classic, that means I can. I believe I can go further. You know, and it's helping me so far. And here I am, of you know, won two international shows in the last few weeks. You know. So that's a big reference for me and, you know, it's biggest drive. And maybe next question, you know, if you could tell us just a, a bit about your daily routine, you know, including your, your meals, you know, you know, just give us a daily schedule. How's your day look like, you know, and, and what, what's the protocol of diet you're mm -hmm. following? Right now, um, before it was, uh, it was very hard, you know, before the... Going into the uh, my last two shows, of course, because I was working full time as a security, right. you know. And after those, you know, like, say I wake up before 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 I stop the security job, just like say six weeks ago. Yeah. Like I wake up in the morning, right? I prep my meals straight into the gym. Crazy two hours in the gym, like intense workout, like proper, like something we did today, proper burnout. Straight into work, nine hours shift, standing on my, standing on the legs, you know, it was very hard, you know, back home, 11 o'clock, had last meal, straight to bed, you know, but after my last two wings, I was able to, you know, say to them, okay, it's time, you know, it's time to stop the work and focus on bodybuilding. So right now, sir, it's, it's, it's a lot easier, you know, it's, it's nice because I can just, you know, wake up it's in the morning. Insane. Yeah, it's, for me, it's, a, right now it's a dream, you know, because I always wanted to, be able to just, you know, wake up and do the thing that I love full time. And right now, that's what I'm doing. I wake up in the morning, I prep my meals straight into the gym. I finish training, train a few clients, back home, heat again and back in again, train again and go home, sleep. And, you know, right. and for my diet parts right now, my carb is uh, quite, um, we're keeping the carbs, you know, not too high, not too low because we're getting ready for 11 weeks out from uh, Arnold Classic. So um, everything is, you know, we're just cruising in right now. Say about 400 grams of carbs and protein, trying to push as much as possible. And training is very intense. Do you have any favorite sources of, of protein you like or what is dominating when you're off season or with your contest prep? I'm sure you probably fish or something when you're closer to the competition or turkey. Some yeah, uh, off season, so it was a lot of red meat, a lot of red meat. And I'm not a fan of chicken, red meat, Fish, um, little bit of chicken. I'm not. I don't, I don't really like chicken too much. And then what contest would be a, just all turkey and fish. You know, tilapia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a great fish it's good to prep with. Fish. <laughs> yeah, guys, Q and A. I think we can. We can. We can start. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a question that a lot of people. Yeah, you can step yeah. You know, you can. You can keep competing as long as you want. You know, until but once you claim the pro card, you can't go back. Right, you know, okay. but you know, if you want to keep competing, don't feel like you're oh, ready you enough. Okay, right. Yeah, you don't you don't have to accept it. You know, but I can claim it. I'm, my my in my case, I'm gonna claim it at the end of the year right, okay. when I'm finished. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, if you say you want a pro card, you've done a show, you want a pro card, and you're planning to do the next show, you've got to place in the top three okay. to retain that pro card. Right, right, yeah. If you're out of the top three, you have to. <laughs> you have to start over so again. Risk, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. That, that means that you can lose that pro card. You can lose that pro card. Really? <laughs> yeah, Mick rang me. It was, uh, wow. was the night before the, before the show. He was blessed. Great timing. Man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he was blessed. Oh, my God. Are you so good? <laughs> <laughs> you better make top three. <laughs> I said, don't worry, Mick. I got this. I got this. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you can lose it. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, he told me. I didn't know as well, but I was like, that was, that was right. no worries. So. Yeah. Um, you can keep competing as strong as you want, you know. As far as you, 
place top three. Place your last show. Are you sure it was Mick and not that guy from Norway? <laughs> <laughs> Try not to make me compete. <laughs> uh. So let me get this right. Like in 2015, you did the super heavyweights. You didn't even make top 15. No, I didn't even check. <laughs> so did, did, you, did you prep for that show seriously or did you just kind of just... Um, I prep it. I prep it seriously. I think I was working yeah, half a yeah. side with David. We were there. We were the show together. Yeah, we were together. You know, but to be honest, my main goal, you know, I wasn't going there as in, you know, my main goal is to see what I needed to do to be able to hang with the. With so what the, changed between 2015 to 2017 to be able to place outside the top mm -hmm. 15 of the Europeans to go on and do uh, the European? Sorry, did the Diamond Cup? What was it the show you did? In this this year, right? Yeah. Diamond Cup and yeah, two Diamond Cup, Portugal two and Czech Republic. Cup. And you can go, but you can go. I just wonder, like, how in the space of two years can you go from outside the top fifteen to winning two overall? Like, like after that show, what you do differently? like after the show, I was talking to the judges and I knew exactly what I need to do. I knew I knew I need to bring up my legs. I need to work extremely hard, and I set the goal. You know, and in my case, when I set a goal, I I have to do it. I have to achieve that goal. And for the last two years, you know, if people go, how are you gonna, two years off? How are you gonna, where are you gonna get a motivation to keep training? I was like, it's not a two year off, two years off. It's a, it's a, I'm prepping. You know, I'm prepping for a show. You know, two years of prep into a show. You know, I stay focused and I just non-stop training. And I was, uh, I think I got to the, my way, uh, I got heaviest, my heaviest was uh, 125 kilos off season. Jesus. Between 2015 and 2017. And you mean? Early, early 2017. By 10, 5, 11, something? By, say 5, 10. Yeah. 125 kilos. Yeah, I got to 125 kilos. I was able to put on 7 to, seven to 9 kilo and train stage, muscle. What are you standing on stage at? Stage 105, 106. Kills, yeah. 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 So it was just pure work, you know, just pure work and you know I knew what I needed to do and you know in order to achieve my goal I knew I have to really get on to work. So know? this year like you won you won two overalls and the two diamond cups. That's essentially two pro cards. Your next show is Hong Kong. The next show is Arnold Classic, which is uh, in Barcelona in September. Barcelona, that's three, and then you're gonna do Hong Kong. And I'm gonna do Hong Kong. I'm gonna I'm going straight to Finland. Uh, after Arnold Classic in Barcelona, that's in uh, end of September, and then from there to Hong Kong, which is the Olympia Amateur, and the last one will be the World Championship in Spain. So you only done six amateur shows this year. This year, yeah. And potentially to win six pro cards. <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> that's a lot of pro card. I, mean. I can sell them. them. They're gonna kill you. I sell them. We them on eBay. There's a lot of people look. I, I, I get up two thousand for this. A piece, even five. Yeah. Yeah. Has this ever been? Has like Dave? Do you know this? Has this ever been done before? Where someone's won six, six overalls in an amateur year? I don't remember. To be honest. So is this like, is this going to be a record? Like, is someone to win six shows like this? I believe so. Could be a record. There's one part of me, when, when you said that, when some people kind of said, blessing, why are you doing all these shows? You've won your IFB Pro card. Before you talked, I would have agreed with Victor Martin, and I would have said, you're right, you should, you should give other people a chance. But after hearing you now, I'd actually agree and kind of say, listen, if there is prize money or prize funding, mm -hmm. Bodybuilding is a lifestyle, but it doesn't pay for itself. So if right. there is something out of it, you, mm -hmm. you've got to do that because and it's that's a, what it's a, a hobby, but it's an expense. And that's what the IBB, uh, the IBB Federation wants. They want their great amateur guys to keep competing. You know, that's why they are awarding them. You know, they want them to, they want them to compete because it's like once we're in the pro leagues, like yeah, they're, they're losing they're athletes, losing, athletes, you know. Losing athletes. And if athletes well known, it brings crowd to the shows, and they're you know. Well, the other side as well, like the, um, your, your social media following is huge, and because of the social media following that you have, that obviously generates other things like uh, sponsorships, mm. uh, better contracts with supplement companies. So that is kind of related to your business because the more you grow that, the more bargaining power it, it enables mm -hmm. you to sit down with these companies. So if you do win, if you do do this, I think everyone here probably you probably are going to do it. Um, this brings your social media. Yeah, it's a, I, I've seen it for me. It's a, there's a lot of benefit to it. And you know? take a year out after that again? 
After that, I think I will take another year of off season to prep for a pro show. So, so before you step out for a year, people will say he's after winning six pro cards, six amateur shows. So that after a year, you're going to be off season. I'm sure you'll be active on social media, but the year you come back up, your platform is going to go like this. And yeah. The last time this guy stood on stage, he just dominated everything. Mm. So. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I say it's, 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 a, it's a win-win, you know. For me, if I stop competing now, you know, everything sort of dies down, you know, because right now, when you're competing, when you're on ship, you know, people like to see it. People appreciate it a lot more. Off-season, mm, you know, nothing. They don't, you know, they, they want to see you shredded. They want to see you in ship, you know. So that's why, you know, at least this year, I want to stay in ship till the end of the year. I think Hong Kong, I, th I think Hong Kong, in my own opinion, is a huge, um, is a huge step and I think it's important. I think there's a massive market that we oh, need yeah. to step into. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact as well, you know, people people can say, you've won Ireland, hands down, you've already, you've already done that. You've, you've then moved on to Europe. People might say, well, Croatia, the Spring Class, or sorry, the, the Croatia, the Diamond Cup and Madrid, it's the same athletes from the same country. But you're now stepping out of this hemisphere mm -hmm. into, 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 you're, you're into another hemisphere with the best of the best again. So it's nearly like, it's nearly like the World Cup really, isn't it? You're kind of going to take mm -hmm. everyone out of each region and then you're announcing your step up the world stage and it's a pro. I mean, I'm just testing myself. How do, I, how, do I, how do I get into this? That's my idea. <laughs> So I, you know, I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna stop competing. I'm gonna do these shows, you know, for myself, for the business point of view, for, yeah. for everything, you know. Yeah, common sense. I definitely agree with that. One more question, guys. Fire away. Training, diet. So if I give up my security job, I can be like you. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how much you love it, how much you want it. Yeah. Do you do security? Be six weeks out for the first show. Uh, ah, I was, I was only, uh, I took two weeks off job before traveling to, to the show. I was working till, <laughs> yeah. That was it. That was very hard. That was tough. Yeah, because you, you already touched on it. And, you know, one thing I've done picked up today, you, you, you've emphasized a few times how sleep and rest is such a big thing. Now, we all know, it, like they say, diet is so much sleep and rest. I don't know those people say, yeah, sleep, rest, recovery, whatever, like, you know. You've kind of emphasized that, but still you're, you're working security, doing late nights and still trying to tie. Yeah, but the, but the thing is that I was working, uh, I stopped late nights maybe three years ago. I stopped doing night, night shift. Mm. Now it was uh, the, the, I was working security two years, three years, just daytime job, you know? Okay. I stopped the night three years ago. You know, so this is retail, so. Better quality sleep. Right? Yeah, of course, yeah, I'm still getting my proper sleep and my proper workout. You know, just a, it was a, a, always a long day, like. Where, where are you training from the Dublin lesson? Which, which gym? I'm training uh, Animal Barbell. Oh, yeah, it's a good gym. Great. Injuries, Wesley. Have you had many what you do to avoid them? Obviously, you have a very big six months up ahead. Uh, injuries, I think the uh, best way to avoid injuries is being very smart. Especially when you're a bodybuilder, you know. As long as you're not doing anything stupid, it's Sometimes injuries happen, but it's very hard. You know, you have to be very, very. With my training, I am. I stay very, very, very smart with my training. I was able. I was able to. I was lucky enough to to talk to uh, uh, Dexter Jackson in uh, Germany. It was we were training, and one of the athletes from track nutrition. She was, you know, she was a good friend with Dexter Jackson, and she, Dexter Jackson actually invited her and myself to come train, come train with him, and. That day I was able to, you know, we we're just talking and, and like, you know, I was like, wow, I was just impressed. Like, wow, you're like 48, you know, and it's still, it was back with Ron Coleman. Uh, everyone. everyone, back then, you were, they were there competing. This guy is still competing. I was like, how, 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 how is it even possible? Ron Coleman can't even walk. I saw him in the, oh, he was just in a bad state. They can't even stand. And I was, you know, this is like, dude, you just have to be smart, man. All machines, no crazy weights. You can never, don't think you ever seen Dexter Justin deadlifted. You never seen him doing crazy squats. I don't think there's a video of him. Yeah. Doing, he never, he never. He's just so, all machines, you know, light dumbbells, you know, not like crazy light, but just, just smart with things. You know, all machines, you know, he was telling me all machines, you know. It's, just, it's all about being smart. Doing nothing stupid like crazy deadlifting. Um, I don't believe bodybuilding needs to deadlift, you know, unless you're asking for something 
Deadlifting is not for bodybuilders, it's for power lift, power lifter. You know, in the feeling you get from deadlifting, right? You don't, you don't feel like, a, like a, after deadlifting, you feel exhausted. You feel, I mean, your whole body is shaking. It's not like you feel your back super pumped. No. So it's not, it's not really walking your back. It's walking a little bit of lower back, a little bit of here, a little bit of that. You know, so deadlifting, you know, can lead to something you don't want if you're a bodybuilder. You know, so being smart with training, you know, a lot of machines, um, nothing crazy, basically, you know, to avoid injuries. So you, you, you basically, you know, uh, not agree with those group of people who really believe, oh, you have to, you know, squat heavy, you have to uh, train really heavy to make a gains, to make a progress, you know. And I'm happy to hear that from you as well, and uh, you spoke with Dexter as well. Uh, because I also believe you don't really have to uh, train really super heavy because that creates a lot of risk of, of injuries mm. and we are bodybuilders, we are not power lifters, right? And uh, basically this is the way how you've been trained within this, two yeah. years and you've been gaining you know, like a lot of size, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, since I started training. You know, you know, so you probably didn't do any like one or two maximum lifts or no, anything like nah, that, right? you never, nah. You, there's yeah. no point. There's no need for that, you know, That's because right. you can't get anything from it. If you don't, if you're lifting a weight, you don't five reps. You know, if it's not a drop set, you don't three reps, four reps. Nah, that's you're training your joints. You know, you're not tapping in those muscle fibers. So tap into them muscle fibers. You have to go at least 10, 15 reps, eight reps. You know, when you're really, really fucked. Seven, eight reps, twelve reps, you know, two reps. No, that's 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 joints. The twenty. That's why, like, if you look at powerlifters, these guys are so strong. They're like, they're they're like aliens. They're so fucking strong. But then, if you compare them to a to a uh, to a bodybuilder, it's like, how can a guy squatting uh, four hundred kgs have smaller legs than a guy squatting one hundred kilos? You know, so you can see. You know, gaining muscle is not about crazy squatting, it's about, you know, it's totally different training. Totally different training. You know, and you as well, you know, you're not like going super light, you know, like say, the light of lap pull down. You can go heavy, you know, you can really heavy. You can, you're doing like uh, maybe 15 reps, you know, 15 reps, eight, 8 reps, 10 reps, heavy, heavy pulls, uh, curls, you know, maintaining the form, you know, so. Again, <laughs> but but watch but watching you, you know. Dave, something. you just took the piss out of us. He just made us look. Well, try it. I know. I know. Try it. Listen, but watching your videos and that kind of stuff, I, I still, you know, see that you, you you didn't actually lift quite easy way like squats, probably 180. You know, the same like bench pressing. You know, you, mm -hmm. you're naturally very very strong as well. You know, so I, I wouldn't even say myself very very strong. Yeah, I think well, I'm <laughs> 180 kilo on the bench press or you know, incline bench press. You know, that's a lot for for many. You know, definitely. It's heavy and again, this is you know? this is with reps. You know, for yeah. me, that's not like, uh, and I'm not doing like two reps, and I'm like doing. 10, 12, 15 reps. You know, so I'm squatting, maybe uh, bench pressing, maybe around 80, I'll get like, a, say I get six clean, and then I have a spotter behind me, I'll tell them, after eight reps, I want another five, six, 50 percent force, 50 from him, 50 from me. You know, so it's not like it's, you know, sometimes you have for a spotter, you know, you just, you know, last rep at me out. You know, and then on your last rep, you know, you've done about 10 reps right now, and your last, last rep struggling up, and this guy like, one more, come on, come on, I hit that shit. You know, you're a bodybuilder, you wanna keep pushing. You know, so it's, it's supposed to help you up, bring it back down slowly, and up again, bring it back down slowly, because the, the goal is, you know, breaking down these muscle fibers to absolutely beat. So they can go home, you can rest, you can eat, you know, recover, and they can grow big and faster. You know, so it's all about breaking them down. To break down these muscle fibers, you know, you have to go to extreme pain, you know, extreme level. Because our body don't want to grow. We don't want to build muscles. Yeah, that's quite interesting what you said, like with that extra few reps after the failure, because, for example, as, as you said, like that one extra rep with the minimum help, you know, I think and I believe that will put more, much more pressure on the joints than on your muscle yeah, fibers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's why you say, help yeah, me more. But yeah, help me, yeah, yeah. Three or four more. Three, three four more, you so know. You will hit but the, the guy's lifting, it's not like he's lifting everything. Your muscle, you're gone, you're gone, gone. But it's just you pushing extra, that even extra, you know, 20% force, that's something. That goes a long way, you know. 
That's, that's interesting. Sense. Makes sense, definitely. I think we were talking here one day, Dave. <coughs> I think between all of us, we're, we're here and we're training over 10 years. And, you know, each of us will be talking like, you know, just how much training has changed over the years. We all came up here, and we're all squatting heavy, we're all bench pressing heavy, we're all lifting heavy. I think everyone starts to say, yeah, I've torn my biceps, my yeah. shoulder, my leg is gone, this one is gone. So I think we all agreed that that old way of training doesn't work because each one of us had pushed ourselves so far that we, you were literally going mm. to something that's broken. Right. I think we've all now, we, we've kind of changed our training. It's like, I think Camille said when he's really well, he said, he said, wow, you're lifting really heavy and insane. And he goes, that's what it used to be like in 2010. Then we kind of remember, but there's a reason we stopped that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of injuries. Know, we were all, a lot, a lot of injuries and in the long run it sets back and it wasn't, it wasn't the way to go. Like, mm-hmm. Someone like you can, uh, upon the size that you have, especially in your legs in the last two years without uh, squatting above 180, like, you know. Yeah, that was, that's, like, that's, you know, that's, that's it's all about, again, the, the, again, the mind muscle connection, you know, when I'm training, especially the legs, and for the fact that I don't train hamstring and quads together, like, if you're training legs and you're bringing hamstring and quads together, that's a huge muscle group. That is super big. You know, you're, you're either going 100% on quads and 10% on hamstring, or 100% on hamstring and maybe 50% on quads. You know, so it's, it's very hard to, to really go, you know, mad on, the, on each muscle group. So I still have quads on legs day, quads is quads. That's what I'm training. An hour 40 mini on quads. Set after set, a lot of leg extension, a lot of lunges, uh, squats, high reps, leg press, high reps. All 20, 20 uh, on my leg press, I've never, I've never done below 20, 20, 20 reps. Everything is 20 reps. You know, no matter how heavy the weight is, it's 20 reps. You know, that's, that's the best way for me. That's what I believe. You know, because, you know, to break these muscle fibers down, you have to go to extra length, pain after pain. And pain after pain means a lot of extra reps. You know, where your body's actually telling you, you're shaking, it's enough. But you're actually, it's very hard by yourself when you train alone, it's so hard to get to these points. So hamstrings blessing, would, would you just would you just focus on hamstrings alone or would you say hamstrings and lower back or is it, this is just hamstrings? Hamstring and maybe calves, you know. Hamstrings maybe. Would you talk us through a hamstring worker? Because you know, one of, one of your most impressive body parts to me though is how far you, how fast you've developed your hamstrings because Oh yeah. Would, would no disrespect not take away like two years ago. Oh, I wouldn't trust have me. Would <laughs> no, even people if I post photos on my two years ago, if I post photos on my Instagram, people commenting, your legs, your legs, your legs. And I'm, to be honest, I don't I don't pace, I don't get paced off. I even I'll reply back to the comments like, yeah, I know, I'm working on it. You know, you have to know your weakness. You know, and a lot of things, a lot of time is, you know, there are a lot of haters out there, right? You know, they're always looking for your witness. You know what? That's fucking good. That's good. That's great. They think they're doing you harm, but they're actually doing you favor if you can accept, you know? If this is something that's weak, look at it. Is, are they, mm, yeah, they might be right. It's weak, but I'm going to make it the best, you know? And my hamstring for the last two years, I was, I was killing them, you know? Like my normal hamstring routine will be, depends on the gym, Animal Barbell was, you know, great gym with everything there. You know, say I start off on a sitting leg, uh, leg curl, and then supersetting that with uh, heavy barbell, uh, leg st- uh, uh, stiff dead leg lift, and then from there, I move on, I do maybe six sets on that, crazy pump, swollen, and then I move on to line leg curl, another maybe, Six, six sets or five sets, depending the feeling, and then I move on to standing leg, uh, leg curl. And uh, from there, I move on to another line leg curl, single legs. You know, so with like in animal, we have about uh, maybe five different type of hamstring machines. So there was no excuses to to for them not to grow because I was just killing them. You know. The stiff leg sounds Romanian deadlift, is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is Romanian deadlift. Yeah. For the, for the hamstrings. Barbell or dumbbells? Yeah. And well, what, what would you recommend actually, barbell or dumbbells? Uh, mm, both of them are great. I think both of them are really good. And did you did you train, because uh, uh, what you just said, you know, the volume was pretty big, I, I believe. Uh, so that day, did you train only hamstrings or something else? Hamstrings, only hamstrings. Only hamstrings. Only hamstrings. Only hamstrings. Yeah. Or maybe you. That's, this is the way how we can keep focus only, isn't it? This is this. And dedicated fully. Fully. I think this is the only way, best way to improve something and to make progress. 
you know if right now you know uh carol's been telling me well carol's my prep coach now and he prepped me for the you know because uh, at, at the end of my off season i knew for me to do well you know i need something i need more than just the mass i need to get into crystal cut condition and I knew it was, it was the man around, you know, to, to help me get into that condition. And right now, it's kind of pointing out, okay, real delt. And right now, what I'm doing is, I'm actually having a special day for real delt. You know, like, you can say that's a very small muscle. How, 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 how can you spend a whole day training? Look, I spend an hour, 20 minutes training just for real delt. I will, <laughs> and I'll do that twice a week. You know, so I'll pay half a day now for real delt and caps, you know. So then you have to sacrifice some other muscles though. The, the, uh, right now, because I have so much time, this is all I do all day. And yeah, right. I don't really, because I'm training twice a day. And okay. at least three times a week, I'm training twice a day. So I'm covering everything. Okay. And right now my training, if you want to know my training split right now, I have a two week split. You know, this is how I'm getting a lot, so much time and, and to focus on all this little muscle. I'm doing a two week split program, uh, training program. Week one, I'm taking three muscle groups. I train them, each muscle group twice per week. And the following week, they rest. And then I pick another three muscle group. I train them twice per week, and like crazy, totally fuck them up. So they'll be fucked for one week. And then they get, get a rest, and then I go again. And I'll say, let's say today, this week, we're going with legs, arms, and uh chest so monday i do legs tuesday i do arm uh, chest wednesday i do arms and thursday rest and then i go friday legs saturday uh chest sunday arms and then following week those guys rest following week we're gonna pick back shoulders and hamstrings so monday back tuesday hamstrings wednesday back, uh wednesday shoulders thursday rest and then friday back uh, Saturday shoulders, Sunday hamstrings. You know, following week back to the, you know, this way. You know, I've been doing this for the last two two years, and trust me, you will make serious gains on this because you are actually focusing on each muscle group. You're not rushing them. You have plenty of energy, and when you go back to the following week, you know, after a week rest of that muscle group, no matter how tired you were, but once you start to train. Because those muscle, those muscle groups, they've been resting for, for a week. So it's just there, power is there, the pump is there, and they're ready to go again, it's just fire it up. It's total different, different ballgame when you, you know. Best way to kind of bring your physique to the next level and to improve overall balance, you know, because you're not leaving anything out, you know. Would you do that more half season or while you're prepping for a show, or would you use that while prepping for a show? I do their both half season and prepping for a show. You know, maybe the the only difference would be maybe strength wise. You know, when I'm cutting, maybe the strength is not there as much. But again, I try to push as much weight as possible when I'm cutting, just to keep the uh, the, the strength and the muscle mass. You know, because when you're cutting, look, it's good. It's a war between strength. You know, because you're your diet, and then you have to really, you gotta work, you gotta fight. You gotta keep that weight high. You gotta keep pushing every weight. Yeah, yeah. Because if you kind of adapt to it, if you let the body go, yeah. because your body wanna move with the diet, or if you let the body move with the diet, you know, then you're gonna start shrinking out. You know, you won't have the fullness, you won't have the mass, because yeah. you can't push as much as possible. You know, but then if you keep the, you know, you keep firing up the stress, yeah. the body will maintain the, the size and the strength. Okay.